In this video, I'm going to walk you through a CFA level one exam style question on gains on a bargain purchase. This is a very specific topic. And in the exam, at least the level one exam, you're not going to be required to perform any computations relating to this concept. However, you are supposed to understand it. And just as with the question on goodwill, which um, the video for that one is called Intuition Behind Goodwill. Um, I decided to show you how goodwill is computed and recorded in the financial statement so that you really appreciate the logic of it. I'm going to perform the same thing here. I want you to compute a gain on a bargain purchase so that later you'll be better placed to handle questions on how analysts deal with this concept when they see it in the financial statements. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, Please keep watching and let's get solving. Okay, this is the question I want us to have a go at. And the scenario is the same as in the question on the intuition behind goodwill. The only thing that's different is this last paragraph down here, which has a different purchase price. And it's just this purchase price, which is going to be different, to be honest. Everything else is the same. And I, you know, if you haven't watched the question or the video devoted to the intuition behind goodwill, I would suggest that you stop this recording right now and go back to the video on goodwill because it forms a good platform from which to solve this question. Um, if you've watched the other video, please go and proceed with this one. So we've got a description of the target company, which is called Manor House its balance sheet, but also in this paragraph, we are told that property, plant and equipment has a fair value which is slightly high, higher than what's included in the balance sheet over here, this carrying amount of 12 million. Well, it doesn't represent the, does that represent the true market or fair value of these assets. They are uh, higher by 2 million over here. And also missing from this balance sheet is, um, you know, an item of brand and logo, which has been valued at 2.5 million. The other values from the balance sheet of the target company are equal to their true market or fair values. Now, assuming Excelsior pays this time 15 million euro to acquire 100% of the share capital of Manor House Resort and Spa, what is the goodwill reported on the consolidated balance sheet of the group as a result of the acquisition? And three options follow. We know from the question on the intuition behind goodwill that goodwill is computed as a difference. It's the excess of the purchase price in an acquisition price minus or over, well, the acquirer's interest. Let me write it out again so that it sticks in your heads acquirer's interest in the fair value of net assets acquired or purchased as part of the acquisition. Now, in this case, the purchase price is going to simply be 15 million. So 15. And the acquirer's interest in the fair value of the net assets acquired is going to be, once again, 100% times the same amount as before, because we've got exactly the same assets as in the question on the intuition behind goodwill, and the same information about any possible adjustments that we would need to make to bring them up to their true fair values. So what I'm going to say is very quickly, this is 100, because we've done it before, 100% times 12 plus 2, this is getting our property, plant and equipment up to its fair value. On top of that, we've got the uh, 2.5 million for the brand and logo fair value. We've got uh, four for trade receivables and we've got three uh, in relation to the cash, which the new subsidiary brings into the group. And we also have some negative items, uh, bank loans and trade receivables with a total you know, of value of 7.5 million in terms of these liabilities. And as I said, we have already performed this computation. And I remember that the items in yellow give a total amount of 23 and a half. 
the items in red, the negative ones, are seven and a half, and that was a net value of 16 million, obviously, times 100%, so times one. As you can see, we have, therefore, a negative amount. 15 minus, minus 16 gives something negative. And I guess this is why the definition of goodwill is not simply to say purchase price minus. So let me cross this out. I intentionally wrote this to reinforce the point. It's not minus. The definition of goodwill is the excess of the purchase price over the acquirer's interest in the fair value of net assets acquired. Now, an excess can't be negative. So, there is no excess here. And if there is no excess, it means we don't have any goodwill. Goodwill, in this case, equals zero, because it only appears if the purchase price is in fact higher than the net value of the assets acquired times the acquirer's interest. So, contrary to what many candidates say in the exam, the answer over here is not negative minus one, it's actually zero. That's going to be the goodwill. So, answer B. That's only part of the story. We've solved the question but let me show you what to deal with this no excess, this negativity over here. The minus one, which obviously comes out from the confrontation and comparison of these numbers, these two numbers, is significant, but it's not called goodwill. In this question, we were specifically asked, what's the goodwill? This is known as a gain on a bargain purchase because we managed to buy a company with valuable assets minus liabilities a net value of 16 for a somewhat bargain price a price which is relatively low and this one isn't an excess so it's not goodwill will be reported in the income statement as a sort of one-time immediate gain. Immediate gain of plus one. Uh, it's a negative one because of the comparison, but it in fact is a gain of plus one million. Let me show you how this works uh, if we introduce these numbers onto the balance sheet template. So here we've got the uh, financial statements template, the balance sheet, the PNL and potentially also other comprehensive income, which I'm not going to use to illustrate these concepts. Let's now try and bring the acquired company, that's Manor House, into the consolidated balance sheet, starting with the assets, which will obviously take in the property, plant and equipment. Now, as we mentioned in the previous video, the one on the intuition behind Goodwill, when we introduce a newly acquired company into the consolidated balance sheet, we do that using fair values. So the PPE would be carried in the consolidated balance sheet at that adjusted value of 14. So I'm writing up 14 as in growth of 14. We've got the brand and logo as well. That needs to be introduced. And the value associated with this item was, as far as I remember, two and a half. Then we had the receivables, which the target company brings. Those were four. And we also had cash coming from the acquired company equal to three. So we've got 14, four and three, that's 21 and two and a half. So far, we've introduced assets with a total value of 23 and a half. Obviously, our newly acquired subsidiary also brings in its own set of liabilities, and those were a bank loan and some trade payables with a total value of seven and a half. So let me just add these over here on the liability side of the balance sheet. Okay, this time around, the holding company paid an amount equal to 
15 million as the purchase price. So in terms of cash flowing out from the group, we're going to have an outflow equal to 15. And this set of numbers pointing upwards or downwards, in, as in this case, will once again lead us to a conclusion that we don't have a balanced balance sheet, unfortunately. Let's see what's happening on this uh, side over here. I've got, well, I know the numbers in uh, green over here are uh, equal to 23 and a half in total. And 23 and a half minus 15 is going to basically generate total overall growth so far of eight and a half million. And that's obviously not the case on the other side of the balance sheet where liabilities have been introduced with a value of seven and a half million only. But that's where the gain on a bargain purchase comes in. It's recognized in the income statement of the acquirer as a one-time immediate gain. So let me write over here, gain on a bargain purchase. And it's what we computed just a moment ago. It's just a plus one million entry into the PL at the time of the acquisition. And as you know, anything that's entered into the PL will impact the overall results of the company. And those results are ultimately transferred to equity. So equity as a result grows by, by plus one as well. And that is basically the magic that needs to happen in order to have following such an acquisition, a balanced balance sheet. So that's how you get a gain on a bargain purchase. The purchase price is going to be lower than the fair value of the net assets acquired, or to be more precise, the acquirer's interest in the fair value of the net assets. In this case, it was 100%.